Hey people, what's up? Welcome back to another video of Circuit Digest. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use a simple multimeter like this one to test your transistors. When I say test, I'll be actually showing you how to do these three things. One, you'll be able to check if the transistor is in working condition or is in a faulty condition. Two, you will be able to tell if the transistor is a NPN transistor or a PNP transistor. And third thing, you will be able to identify the pins. That is, you will be able to say which one of these three pins is collector, base and emitter. So let's get started. So now before we go ahead and play around with the multimeter, it is important for us to go through some theory. So please uh, stay with me for that. So basically there are two types of transistor. One is an NPN transistor. Another is a PNP transistor. I have shown you the symbol for both. The NPN transistor has an outward arrow and the PNP transistor has an inward arrow. And both these transistors will have the same pins like collector, base and emitter. So again here, collector, base and emitter. Now, if you see the physical construction of a transistor, in an NPN transistor, there will be two N-type material and one P-type material. And for a P-type transistor, there will be two P-type material and one N-type material. Now, uh, further diving down into the physical construction of a transistor, uh, just know that a emitter will be heavily doped, the base will be least doped, and the collector will be moderately doped. Now, uh, why I'm saying you all this, you will understand uh, very soon when I start to explain you uh, how to test the transistors, but just get to know this for now. So now to test a transistor, uh, make sure your multimeter is uh, ready. So in your multimeter, make sure your probes or the black probe should be in the common terminal, as you can see here. The black probe should be in the common terminal and the red probe should be connected to the voltage mode. Once you have done that, you should look for this diode symbol on the multimeter. Now this multimeter here is the TD830D which is a very commonly used multimeter for its price and you can pretty much see this diode symbol in every multimeter which you have. So for example, I have another multimeter here from HTC and in this multimeter you can see the diode symbol over here. Now even if it is any other multimeter like this Unity multimeter over here, you can see the diode symbol is over here. So just find out the diode symbol on your multimeter and set your multimeter in the diode mode just like this. Now the multimeter is ready. Now let's get started with testing the transistors. So for the first transistor, uh, let's pick any one of these three. Uh, let's say you don't know the part number of the transistor and you don't know if it is working, you don't know if it is an N-type or P-type material. So we'll figure all of that using this multimeter. Now uh, the multimeter is set in voltage mode. Take your two probes. Uh, it's always handy to have a pen with you when you're doing this. So just for the sake of understanding, let's say that this N refers to negative, this P refers to positive and this N refers to negative. But in actually it refers to the N type and the P type material used in the physical construction. Now for negative, as we know, it's black and positive will be red. With that, let's put the multimeter in diode mode and go ahead with our testing. What you have to do is you have to place the probes and measure the voltage drop. So this diode mode will measure the voltage drop across any two pins to which you place these leads. So let's start measuring the voltage drop. You can place the probes anywhere. For example, let me place the red here and the black here. So this is a kind of a trial and error method. Let me show you what the multimeter is showing here. So let's try red here and black here. Okay, we are not getting anything. There is no voltage drop. Now let's try red here and black here. Again, there is no voltage drop. Now let's change the polarity of our multimeter leads and proceed. Black here, red here. Okay, great. We are getting a voltage drop now. Now if you see, we have placed N over here, negative, and P over here, positive. And for that, we are getting a value of 798. Let's note that down. So we got our N over here and P over here and the value was 798. Now let's go ahead. Let's keep the N over here and we'll see another voltage drop. No, you're not getting anything. 
this is what we just checked so let's keep our p over here because we know that this is the p and now n over here okay now we're getting another voltage drop of 796 so again now we have placed the p over here and n over here and the voltage drop is 796 so we already know this is the p we'll just add n and the voltage drop is 796 now we know that this transistor is an npn transistor and the voltage drop between these two pins is 798 and the voltage drop between these two pins is 796 now uh, once you have done this it means the transistor is definitely in a working condition if you are not able to get voltage drop between any of these two pins in any of the polarities it means the transistor is damaged now this transistor is in a working state it is an npn transistor now it's time to figure out which is the collector base and emitter pin now finding the base pin is the most easiest thing because if you have only one p if you see there is only one p so it will be base so the center pin over here is the base now we have to figure out which is collector and which is emitter this might be the collector or the emitter this might be the collector or the emitter so to do that we will need this theory here so the emitter will be heavily doped so because it is heavily doped it will have the highest voltage drop now among these two things if you see 798 is bigger than 796 so there is a heavy voltage drop between these two leads so this pin will be our emitter so we already know that this is our base and this is our emitter now and this is our collector now so do take this with a pinch of salt because it works like 90% of the times sometimes it doesn't work the base identifying the base definitely works but identifying the emitter and collector do take it with a pinch of salt if you can read the part number of the transistor directly go to the website and search for the data sheet and you will find the pinout over there but if you don't want to do it this method will give you a success ratio of like 90% of the times now we have figured out that this transistor is an npn transistor we have figured out that the first pin is emitter the second pin is base and the third pin is collector now let's repeat this for another transistor so we have another transistor here now again the same thing let me just move this ahead so we're going to do the same thing start anywhere and just figure out which pins are giving you a voltage drop again assume this as n assume this as p let's start doing it no no voltage drop no voltage drop change the polarity yes there is a voltage drop when the first pin is p and the second pin is n and the voltage drop is 774 so let's write it down p n 7 oops i forgot the value let's check it again 774 is our value so 774 now let's go ahead we already know that the first pin is p and the second pin is n so this has to be a pnp transistor and the second pin's voltage drop is 779 so again the same theory in a pnp transistor the only n pin will be the base so we now know that the center pin is the base and we have to figure out which one is the collector pin to do that we have to see which pin has the highest voltage drop so 70 779 is higher than 774 so this pin has the highest voltage drop so this will be the emitter and this will be the collector so again for this transistor also we have identified that it is working because we found two voltage drops and we have found that the first pin is the collector second pin is the base and the third pin is an emitter so let's do it again just so that you get pretty familiar with the process so let me move this ahead again now let's start with our random probing i'll go like this okay we hit a voltage drop first pin is n second pin is p and we get a voltage drop of 781 and it was n p now we have to figure out we know that the center pin is a p 
we'll just figure out the voltage drop of this and we get a voltage drop of 785 fine so 785 and this was n now again the same process center pin is p we know it's a base voila it's a base and the first pin is 781 and the second pin is 785 this one has the greatest thing so heavily doped win will have highest voltage drop and this is an emitter and this is the collector so again now we know that this transistor is working we know that it is an npn transistor and we know that this pin is the collector this pin is the base and this pin is the emitter so that is it guys this is how you can figure out if a transistor is working this is how you can figure out if the transistor is npn or a pnp and this is how you can figure out the pinouts of a transistor so I hope this video was really useful to you. If yes, do like this video and also subscribe for Circuit Digest so that you will get more videos like this. That's it. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.